Brought to you in part by Mananoc Flooring and Decorating, offering quality sales, service, and installation for over 35 years on Production Avenue next to Subaru of Keene. Hey everybody, welcome to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris. I'm going to be your host on this journey through pasta. One of my favorite meals of all time, pasta. Any type of pasta will make me happy. Now listen, I'm going to be working with Carla's Pasta. Carla is a company that's run by Carla. Hello. And she makes some incredible pasta. Comes from Torino. That's where I come from. Some great foods. We're going to be talking about the pastas that you can find at your local store. So we're going to be making sacchettini, these little beggar purses, in a salad with some fennel and celery. We're going to be doing a mushroom sauce, porcini mushroom sauce, with some regular ravioli. And then finally, we're going to be doing another cool sauce with spinach ravioli. So do not go away, because your culinary journey starts now. Welcome back to A Culinary Journey. Today we're talking about Carla's pasta. You know, Carla's not here, but she is in spirit. Well, we're doing pasta from Carla's Pasta Company. Now today I'm going to be making a sacchettini. These are like little beggar's purses. You could actually purchase them just in these bags. And they, what's cool about them, you can actually microwave them. You know, I wouldn't normally say go ahead and microwave your pasta, but they're pre-cooked, really easy to cook. Now what I'm going to do is make a pasta salad that came right off of her website and it's simple and it's fun. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to cook up some bacon. So I'm going to get some bacon strips in a nice hot pan. I don't have to add any oil. But if I want to take away or if I want to ex uh, extract a little more fat, what I do is add some salt to the bacon. It's going to pull out more of that fat, which I will save later because I love cooking with bacon and bacon fat. There we go. We're going to get those in. We're going to get those nice and seared. So that's part one. Part two is getting these sacchettini in the water. So we'll just cut open the bag. Even though they, these bags are sometimes microwavable because they're pre-cooked as far as the pasta goes, I'm going to show you what it looks like real quick in one of these bowls. So even though they're microwavable, I still prefer to, to throw them in water and just kind of get them to uh, come to get or cook real quickly. And they like, look like these little, bag, these little purses, right? So get that in the water. Give that a quick stir, and that'll cook up rather quickly. Inside there, four different cheeses, or five or six different, tons of different cheeses. <laughs> and it's just going to add a lot of flavor to our salad. Now, I'm going to do the salad where it's going to be a little bit warm, too. Ooh, there's one more. Don't let them go away. Um, where it's going to be a little warm in the salad. So we're going to have cold ingredients or raw ingredients, and then we're going to add the warm pasta and the warm bacon. Now, you can let it cool off. That's fine. You can do it that way also. But I'm going to really enjoy doing it this way, where I'm going to have some cold and hot, some different textures. Now, next thing I want to do is get my celery going. You guys remember what I say about all this extra celery, right? Use it up as much as you can. And then we could use it in a stock as well. So let me get my knife. What do I do with my knife? I got too excited about this pasta. There you go. And we're going to just make some thin strips of celery real quick. There you go. Let a little bit on a bias. Kind of following our guide hand. We want some nice crunch in this pasta salad and with the cheesy sacchettini and the bacon. Oh, you're not excited about this yet. You're going to be in a minute. Another thing I love with, pot, with any type of pasta or any type of Italian cooking is fennel. We're going to put some fennel in here too. So let's get our celery cut up real quick. Right, keep an eye on your bacon too while you're doing this part. You can have your bacon pre-cooked and add it in there if you like. I just want to render it down, get a nice little crunch. We're gonna, it's all about giving different flavors and different textures at the same time. So we have our celery. 
We have our fennel. Now the fennel I could do the same way as the celery if I wanted to. But what I want to do with the fennel, I want to just bring a lot of flavor into it and just grate it real quick into there. Again, a different texture. It's almost going to melt away into there a little bit. You won't even know it's there. Gets a little bit of that licorice anise flavor, right? You get that a little bit from the fennel, but not quite as strong as using a fennel seed. So if you do cook with fennel, I recommend using the fennel bowl. They roast up really nicely too for uh, just a side vegetable, and they grill well too. So we have some fennel, we have some celery. There's our crunch in there. And we're going to check on our bacon, flip that over. There you go, come here. Hey, those things work. Well, this one's a little toasty, but that's okay. Going to add more of a crunch to it. And we'll shut that off. Again, I'm going to reserve that bacon fat for another time because, again, I love to cook with it. As we take a look real quick at our pasta, it's kind of floating to the top. That's how you know when your ravioli or your sacchettini or any stuffed pasta is done. It starts floating to the top. These will float very quickly. You're talking about four or five minutes, and they'll be floating to the top ready to go. They're really just getting this. They come from the freezer, go right into the pot, we added, I added a little bit of salt to the water, and that's all I really need to do. That's what's great about this kind of pasta right there. All right, so then we're going to give a little rough chop to our bacon. Mm. And get it in there. Let it kind of warm up in there. Look at that. That's beautiful. Here you go. So we got bacon. We have the, uh, the fennel, and we have the celery. That's all we're doing to that. In this other bowl, what we're going to do quickly is make a little bit of a dressing. So Dijon mustard, a little bit of red wine vinegar, and some olive oil and salt and pepper. Let's get that salt and pepper going in there. And pepper into the dressing. And I'm going to put a little pepper right into here, too. Now, once you know your pasta is about ready, you want to get it out of there because you don't want it to overcook because they'll start breaking apart. So I love using the drainer, strainer, drainer. Call it what you want. Let's get all the excess water out. Dump it right in. And we're already starting to kind of start combining the flavors together. So in here, we have the celery and the bacon. So look how quick this pasta salad is, too. I mean, it's going to be a really quick and easy pasta salad. Now, i got to do one thing before I add the dressing. You want to have a little bit of acidity in there. That's where the vinegar comes in. Uh, the mustard is going to help hold this dressing together. Look at that. We start mixing the vinegar and the mustard together. And then slowly, just add our oil. Now, one of the things, too, I would say, when you're making a dressing and you're whisking it in yourself, is to make sure you get a bowl, but a bowl with a flat bottom so it doesn't slide around with you. If you ever have a bowl that's kind of rounded on the bottom, here's a quick recommendation. It's using a towel and sticking it on there. So you could do this with one hand. See? I get to whisk with one hand and add the oil and just drizzle in the oil little by little. There it is. Woo. And we're starting to make a nice creamy Dijon mustard and vinegar vinaigrette. There we go. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. I try to use extra virgin olive oil as a finishing or a salad dressing because you're just going to get a lot more flavor from it than cooking with it as a beginning. Let's get our dressing in there and mix it up. Now there's one more ingredient that needs to go in here, but before I do that, my, this is a great time where if you want to omit an ingredient, this is where you do it. I need just this little plate that had, we'll take a couple of scoops out. This right here is for my wife because she doesn't eat gorgonzola. So there you go. I'll keep that on the side for her. But for the rest of us, some gorgonzola cheese kind of broken up in there. Oh, this just gets better. Now, what's great about having the warm bacon and the warm pasta and the broken up gorgonzola in there is that it melts it just a little bit. And as it's melting, we're going to have this gorgeous dish. Now, I'm going to finish folding this in, let it kind of sit. If you wanted to serve this totally cold, chill your pasta after you've boiled it, and you serve it cold as a cold pasta. But I think this makes a wonderful start to any type of picnic. Gorgonzola, bacon, fennel that's shaved in there with the celery, can't go wrong. That is a quick dish. I mean, I did it right in the amount of time you watched me. When we come back, I'm going to do a really amazing northern Italian walnut sauce. We're going to serve that with spinach ravioli. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hey 
everybody, welcome back to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris, and we are making pasta. Now, up north in Italy, we do a, what's called a walnut sauce. And it's basically walnuts and cream combined, giving you so much flavor and so excellent. And on Carlos Ravioli on their website, they have a walnut cream sauce. It is simple and it's wonderful. And it goes great with these spinach uh, striped ravioli that she has. So these are going to be the ones, again, in their, her little package, Cucina di Carla. And they could either be microwaved or they could be popped in boiling water like we're going to do here. I put some salt in my boiling water. And they're pre-cooked, so they're going to be really quick to cook. But I want to get them to the right temperature. So I'm just going to put them right in the water and then cook our sauce. On a pan that's medium high heat, watch how quick this is. We're going to add some butter. Make sure I have all my ingredients. Just a little bit of butter. And we're going to add some pine nuts and walnuts. Now I'm going to leave the pine nuts whole, but I also want to toast them at the same time. Now normally what I do is toast the, a pine nut or a walnut in a separate pan without any oil or any fat, and it kind of toasts by itself. And that's what I'm going to do with the pine nuts here. The pine nuts are going to toast in another pan, so we'll put those over here. But the walnuts are going to cook with the butter. And then what you have to really be careful about is not burning the pignoli or the pine nuts um, but you just want to get them nice and toasted. They'll bring out a lot more flavor. So we're going to let those hang out there for a little bit. And the butter is kind of melting down. We're not trying to cook. We're just trying to melt the butter. And then we have crushed walnuts that we're going to add to this. We're going to let cook. So, and then we're going to salt it and pepper it. So we want to season the uh, walnuts also. When I say quick, simple, and easy, I'm not kidding. We're not talking about some elaborate recipe that takes forever to cook. We're just salt, pepper, the walnuts, a little bit of cream, and that's all you're really going to need for this. So let's get a little black pepper in there. Again, be careful. You don't want to, this is not one of those dishes that you want to just put in the pan and forget all about. So we'll just give it a little bit of a shake. Make sure the walnuts are uh, cooking, but not overcooking. We'll just keep them in their butter, because they're just going to add more flavor to the, to the dish. Real, I mean, simple, simple flavors, right? And that's when you talk about northern Italian cooking. You, you do use a lot of butters and creams and those kind of things. But you don't have to add too many ingredients. You just want to get just the flavor of the ingredients, and they're going to pop out and make everything come together. So as you can see by the pine nuts, we're getting a little bit of toast on either side. I'm going to shut this off because that's going to be just about right. My pan holds a lot of heat, so I'm going to let them finish up in there. And here, my walnuts are nice. I'm not going to don't need any. Uh, any type of wine or anything like that. These are just going to have the cream in it. And that's what we're going to put in right now. And we're just going to let that cook down. There you go. And all that walnut flavor is going to come out. Perfect. We'll let that cook down. One of my favorite recipes or favorite memories is a walnut sauce. It just, it just, I remember that with gnocchi or, or uh, with the uh, tortellini, any type of sauce or any type of pasta that is bigger and has a little bite to it with a walnut sauce. Really incredible flavors. So we have salt, we have pepper in there, and we're just going to add our ravioli, which took about no time to cook because they're ready to go in there. We'll just, eh, maybe they need a little bit more. No, I think they're good to go. So we'll just take our ravioli. We'll add it to our cream sauce that's reducing. And not only what's great about the Carlos pasta or any other, any pasta that has these stripes on it, is that, wow, look at that. Look at the, the nice color it already gives to the dish. You know, we have the nuts. Then we, we sprinkle our pine nuts on it also. And that's probably a little more than I, but I also like the, the pine nut effect to it. And you're going to get all this crunch, all this great flavor to it. And the last thing we need to do for this dish, and did I tell you it was easy? Super, super fast. I mean, I don't make them this fast on this show that often. We'll just take some parsley, rough chop it. As it reduces down and the pasta starts taking on the flavor of the walnuts, well, uh, we throw some parsley on there. We'll get this in a bowl. Watch this. Ta da! You're going to love the way this comes out on a bowl. Just the fresh parsley, this Italian flat leaf parsley, folded in at the last minute. And if everyone had just a little bit of pignoli and walnuts on their dish, they'd be happy. A little grated cheese. And our second dish is done. Now we're going to go to another level, taking some, some dried porcini mushrooms. We're going to make a porcini mushroom brandy cream sauce to go with cheese ravioli. That's going to really hit the spot. Can't go wrong. Here we go. 
We're going to come back and finish off with porcini mushroom sauce with cheese ravioli. Don't go away. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris, talking pasta, my favorite ingredient in all of cooking. Any type of pasta, anywhere, any place, anytime. In this case, Carla's pasta. And what, what I'm doing is I did a couple of dishes. I did a this cheese, uh, a cheese and white, white and cheese <laughs> uh, striped pasta inside is ricotta and cheese. We have pignoli nuts and walnuts in that sauce. That's incredible. I made those six cheese filled saccatini. Um, looks like little beggar's purses. Makes a wonderful salad with some fresh ingredients in there. And again, simple and easy. All recipes that are easy. These are cheese ravioli. Again, really simple. These are all just a straight cheese ravioli that they have jumbo. I also serve them in our restaurant. Now, different than what I normally do when I'm making ingredients or making dishes, um, butter to start off a lot of the dishes instead of the oil that I use. And also what you haven't noticed is a lot of garlic that's used in these dishes. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a leap from what the recipes say and I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to this next dish. Not much, but instead of chopping garlic into a dish, I'm going to flavor the butter with just a touch of garlic. Now one of the things that growing up in an Italian family has shown me is that my family never really did that big heavy push of garlic in everything they did. We use it a lot at the restaurant to get, add flavor for different parts of the Mediterranean. But garlic is an additive for flavors. It shouldn't overpower it. So what I'm doing here is kind of flavoring the oil with the garlic. So I have the oil. I, I'm saying I said oil. and See, I'm so used to that. I'm flavoring the butter with the garlic. So what I'm doing right now is just going to let the the garlic saute in the butter just for a little bit, not until it gets brown, but just adds a little bit of flavor. And I'm going to take these garlic pieces out. Again, you don't want to have to bite into a lot of garlic. You're just going to get a touch of the flavor, and it's going to add to what we're doing. So I'll move that over to the side. I remember my dad teaching me to cook, because he's actually the best cook in my family. I remember him doing one thing, which was uh, really amazing. He said, if you ever burn garlic for me, Luca, and you want to feed me, don't ever bring it to me because I won't eat it. I said, okay. No, it never happened, because it has this really acidic and bitter taste to it, so you don't want to have that. So what I have here is simple. Just the butter with a little flavor of the garlic. I'm going to make sure it doesn't get too hot. Here I have porcini mushrooms, another staple that were in my family forever. Most people like to bloom the porcini mushroom. These are dried. They're harvested usually at the end of August or the beginning of September, late summer, early fall. And then they're dry. They intensify their flavor. If you can find fresh porcini mushrooms, that's great. Uh, the ones that you get from Italy, you probably won't find fresh over here in the States. But if you can find them, that's wonderful. But it has a, a more mellow of a flavor, not, not quite as, as, uh, as earthy and, and big as the flavor you get from dried. By getting the dry ones, then I reconstitute them. I do them in a little bit of brandy. It allows me to do two things. One, I get this amazing brandy mushroom liquid I could use everywhere else. And two, I could use it in the dish as well. And it adds a little more flavor to the mushroom. So basically, I'm just going to take those mushrooms and add them to the pan. I don't need a lot of that brandy flavor in this dish. Once again, these recipes are simple. All they really want to do is bring out the flavors of the main ingredients and the pasta. You want to taste the ravioli and the cheese. You want those to be the centerpiece of what you're doing. So we're adding that to our butter. We're sauteing mushrooms and butter. What better thing to do than saute mushrooms and butter? And a little bit of that brandy's in there too, right? I'm going to do some salt and pepper. And for people that are at home and they go, well, I can't make this extravagant sauce or I can't take all this time, really, for two, for one, for three, it doesn't matter how many you are, you can make this sauce rather quickly. Let's get the ravioli in too. I got all excited about the sauce. Let's get those in again. A lot of the Carla pastas are pre-cooked, so that way when you get these ravioli, you don't have to wait eight to ten minutes. I mean, we're talking about five minutes in a boiling pot of water, and they should be ready. You really just want to cook them, get the heat throughout the whole cheese part, and you could finish that in the sauce. All right, so on a medium to low heat, we're having the mushrooms, again, reconstitute in the butter, bring more flavor to the party. While that's happening, I'm going to get my garnish ready for this, and I'm just going to take... A little bit of parsley, flat, flat leaf parsley is probably the best way to go. It's just, it actually has flavor. A lot of people go, well, flat leaf or parsley, it doesn't have flavor. It really does. It has a lot of flavor, especially the Italian parsley. 
and it brings a lot of flavor to the dish. It gives some brightness because we have these earthy flavors right in here and the parsley is just going to give some brightness right at the end. Don't add it in too early because if you do, what you're going to do is just lose everything that you're trying to get out of the vibrant, the vibrancy, is that even a word? No, I don't know. The vibrancy of the, <laughs> of the dish. So we have our parsley ready. Our mushrooms are coming together, we're reconstituting, they're going to be amazing. And again, we're going to bring the whole dish together with a little bit of cream and we'll let that finish up real quick. Now as that's finishing up, now with cream, using heavy cream is important in this dish. Uh, you, could use a, you could use a light cream, but you're not going to get as thick of a sauce as we did earlier on with the walnuts and, and the cream sauce. And here, here's we turn up the heat a little bit more. We start getting a nice bubble. Cream, heavy cream won't break on you like milk will, it won't curdle. What it's going to do is just going to tighten up. A lot of the extra water and extra liquid evaporates. The fat stays, kind of comes together like a big party. And it's going to be around the mushrooms. It's going to take the earthiness and kind of level out that playing field. We have a ravioli cooking in there. We're going to get them almost all the way through. Like I said, this is something I use for ravioli at my own restaurant. One, because it cooks rather quickly. Uh, you don't even need a full boil to the water sometimes where it just cooks it all through. And then by finishing it in the sauce, letting some of that starch help bring the, the sauce together too. So now the cream's got this nice bubble around it. Watch this. I'm going to add my ravioli to it, which has been sitting in my water, ready to go. And actually, if you had a finicky household or you wanted to almost start your own little restaurant kitchen in your house when you had people over, you could say, what type of pasta would you like? I'll make you a sauce. Well, you give them a menu. Don't make it that out. That easy for them. And I can make it real quick. And with one colander and some water and some of these types of pasta out there, you can really have a lot of fun at the house showing off sauces. So this sauce, a little darker than the other ones. Oh, this is going to be good. This is my favorite of all of them. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese right away. Now, you did notice that with all of the pastas I've done today, I've tossed them into the sauce, whether it's the dressing or whether it's in the sauce. When you're doing pastas, even if it's a penne or, or a ziti or any other type of pasta, your last step should be from the water into the pot. And then they absorb a little more of the sauce and they take on a whole different flavor. If you're just pouring it over, you won't get the same flavor. So let's get some on there. Look at that. Well, we need some more mushrooms. I don't know if you can't smell those mushrooms, but I can. And what we're going to do, just garnish here with the parsley, a little more cheese. And so I made three pastas very quick. Let me show you all three of those. We got our pasta sacchettini salad with the fennel and the celery. Oh, that looks good. I can't wait to try the spinach and the walnuts and the pine nuts in there. And then the mushroom, which I'm not even going to wait to, to do that one. So I got the mushroom ready to go. Hey, that's it for our culinary journey with Carla's pastas. Uh, you find a great brand of ravioli like the one I found in Carla's. You're going to want to use it all the time. And you find quick, easy recipes like this. You can't go wrong. Hey, I'm Luca Paris. This is Mananoc Flooring of Vermont Cabinetry. This is the design center. You want to come down here and check this out. You should do it while I'm eating the pasta. It makes it even better. But if you're not, check out our studio. In the meantime, enjoy. I'll see you next time on A Culinary Journey.